Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Turn to Page number three uh, with Rhapsody and me. Oh, 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 oh. It is time to turn to page number three. Number th I'm, I'm seeing a bat on the cover. I I'm, see a bat. I'm taking my cues. That's true. Yeah, I... I guess I was like, why did I go, why is this the only one where I went, three, but I was like, yeah, it's a vampire bat. He's going, mm -hmm. yeah, he's going, yeah, right in, the, uh, way in the, right in the face. You kind of have to, uh, <laughs> 20 different endings. Who would have thought? I, I hope we don't have to encounter this Zubat, <laughs> Wubat, noble, like monstrosity that we're looking at here. Yeah, it's. It's the most spirit Halloween I think we've gotten yet. <laughs> Did you know that they're mm -hmm. making... This is completely unrelated. Did you know they're making a spirit Halloween movie? The, the, the Halloween novelty store is getting a movie? <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to make of it, but honestly, I feel like it's probably going to be goosebumpish in nature. <laughs> I can't imagine they're gonna. You'd take have it. to imagine because they can't take themselves seriously, right? It, right? Like otherwise, it's you know, lightning strikes the Halloween novelty store, and all of the different things come to life, and then yeah. they enact, you know, a Halloween. Yeah, but that's that's a bit you know straightforward. That's like an '80s horror film at this point. Like that's that's there's not enough of a twist to that. Like if yeah. it turns out everyone just secretly had like a neurotoxin that was <laughs> implanted by like a government agency yes. in the water supply or something okay. like that. That's a 2010s, but we need to get to 2020s. So we need death games involved as well. We Absolutely. need effectively escape rooms. <laughs> yes. So we, we need escape rooms. Otherwise, yeah, I think we're going to get, uh, yeah, of course, um, a magical thunderbolt hit our store. They all, the mummy escaped, and so did the Frankenstein. We need to get them back mm -hmm. before close, or my dad's <laughs> gonna have to close the store, and we're gonna have to move, and I won't get to see my friends in school anymore. Speaking of school, do you want to go off to the mummy first? Turn to page yes. sixty-one. Yes. Speaking of school, I think that that's what we we postulated at the last episode. What that wing hall meant, I. It seems mm. to be that it might be school. Would you that be interested in that's... getting the, those answers answered <laughs> on the I, Beware page? I would happily. Would you like to hear what yes. we're about to be encountering? I would like to hear it. I see it. I'd like Beware. to hear it. Beware. Do not read this book from beginning to end. Making friends in your new town is harder than you thought. The kids in your school are members of the horror club. They have their meetings in the dark in Batwin Hall, a rundown house that's haunted by the ghost of Professor Krupnik. When the horror club decides to play a spooky game, you really want to join in. But then you find out you'll have to search the professor's cursed crypt in the cemetery or face an ancient mummy, a witch and a hungry werewolf or the terrifying ghost of Professor Krupnik himself before the night is through. You're in control of the scary adventure. You decide what will happen, and you decide how terrifying the scares will be. Oh my goodness! I will say these choice the choices there. They're going. You have to search the cursed crypt, or and this is all one option. Or face yes. an ancient mummy, witch, and hungry werewolf. <laughs> yeah. Or a ghost. Do you want to have to look for a thing in a defined area? Yes. Or face. Four of the, sorry, three of the most terrifying creatures of horror canon, as well as Professor yes. Krupnik. Do you want to A, swim a lap in the pool, B, lift 50 pound dumbbells, C, run a triathlon? <laughs> Which one do you want to do? <laughs> now, we, we laugh, and yet, yes, in Goosebumps, sometimes going for the absurd option yeah. turns out to be the thing that is, we got blown! Back onto the bridge, Rita. It's true. We did lose half our face canonically, though, when we got blown back on the bridge. But uh, <laughs> either way, no one mentioned it from then on out. Everyone was very. Polite I know about that. they're very kind. Very kind. They've seen it. <laughs> they've seen it before. Uh, either way, I'm I'm very excited and curious to to get on into this one. So you want to turn to turn to page one and mm -hmm. bring us in. 
to see with Batwing Hall. What, I guess I never said the entire name. Trapped in Batwing Hall is the name of this Give Yourself Goosebumps book uh, that we are about to read. Page one. This town stinks. It's Friday afternoon, the end of your first week at a new school. Your family just moved to this town last month, and so far no one at the school has even tried to be your friend. Day after day, you sit in class waiting for someone to talk to you, waiting and staring at the strange faces around you. How could you possibly go through the year without any friends, you wonder? Oh boy, do I have some tips for you. You're <laughs> cool. You know who you are. You know you are. You had tons of friends at your old school. You trudge home slowly. All you have to look forward to is a boring weekend of watching TV with your parents and your bratty little brother. Then something hits you in the back of your jacket. You whirl around, a pebble drops onto the ground. You glance up and notice a brown-haired boy about your own age. Hey. He calls out. I'm Nick. Hi. You reply and introduce yourself. We're in the same class at school, Nick says. That's funny, you think. You don't remember seeing him there, but you smile anyway. You're so happy someone is finally talking to you. Uh, I leave here. Nick tells you. He points to a two-story greenhouse on the next block. You gaze back at him, shocked. But you can't live there. There's no way. I definitely thought when he said, I live here, that they were at school. <laughs> 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 I live there under the bleachers. I drink from the My drinking name is fountain. Bat, Bat Wing. <laughs> Bat Wing. Uh, could I interest you in my hall? I would like to show you two. <laughs> okay. Go on to page two. Would you would you like to change doors? This is the Batwing Hall problem. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, what do you mean I can't live here? Nick asks. <laughs> I know my own house. Uh I live next door. You tell him. You point to the red brick house next to the green one. The greenhouse has been empty all month. There haven't been any lights on. No cars in the driveway. I was on vacation with my family. We just got back last night. Nick says. What do you think of school? Uh, it's okay, I guess. You reply. You're afraid to say anything more. You never know. Maybe this kid Nick actually likes school. I mean, he lives there. <laughs> like it. I love it. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> morning, night, morning, evening, nighttime. School, school, school. Can you believe how much homework our teachers gave us this weekend? Nick complains. Oh, thank God he's not a nerd. He kicks a stone <laughs> down the street as you walk. <laughs> All the kids who had Mr. McCormick last year say he's really tough and mean. A total monster. You agree. Mm. You agree. The next thing you know, you and Nick are comparing favorite rock groups and comic books. Both of you collect Spider-Man comics. Nick has all the first issues from the last five years, too. Comics are cool, but do you know what's even cooler? What? Horror stories. In fact, I... He stops talking and stares at you. Turn to page three. What? What about horror stories? It's probably way too scary for you. Nothing's too scary for me. That's because you've never been to the horror club. What's that? It's a club that I belong to. You've got to be really brave to be a member. When we meet, we tell spooky stories, really scary stuff. Cool. I love scary stories. Can I join? If you think you can handle it, we meet every Friday night at Batwing Hall. That's the deserted house at the dead of our street. It was old Professor Krupnik's house. I've seen the house. <laughs> it looks haunted. You tell Nick with a laugh. Don't laugh. It is haunted. Hurry to page 100. <laughs> <laughs> oh, haunted? Huh? For real? That's that's a hurry. That's a pace. Right yeah. For, For real. real. Nick, wait. Nick replies seriously. I broke my brain there. <laughs> that's all good. <laughs> that's why we picked it. Some of the scariest stories I've ever heard happened in Batwing Hall. Like what? Like the story of the kids on Halloween night. They were all dressed up, trick-or-treating. They rang Krupnik's doorbell. A figure dressed in all black answered. 
and the kids were invited inside, only they never came out. What happened? No one knows. But late at night, you can still hear the kids' screams. Horrible screams. And when the moon is full, some people say they've seen little creatures trapped in monster costumes roaming about inside the house. Trapped. Forever. Wow. <laughs> Good story. It's not a story. Being a member of a horror club can be very dangerous. Very dangerous. <sighs> Today's Friday. We meet tonight. Do you want to come? What do you think? Risk it and go to the horror club tonight. Turn to page 17. Say thanks anyways and go to 91. I'm no well, I mean, that sounds like it could be dangerous. Very dangerous. It's true. To go to the club or to say no? <laughs> To say no, this guy is intimidating. He's, yes. He threw a pebble at us. Who knows? Oh we turn God. around and say, actually, I don't want to meet you. Maybe he throws a boulder next time. Maybe he's a werewolf, witch, and hungry mummy or whatever. Maybe he's all three of them at, at once. <laughs> and the ghost of Professor Krupnik himself. Uh, yes, and the crypt. It was me. I was the crypt all along. <laughs> I I'm happy to go to the horror club. I'm curious what saying I am does, too, yes. but I think we just go to the. What, what do you What do you do? You think we check the curiosity? Just to I, go die or. I, I mean, the 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 concern is that we go to that page and it's a couple pages down until we die, but we know the entire time we've taken the the wimp's path to hell. I will say I vetted it. Let's go to page ninety one. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Great choice. Now you're stuck at home with nothing to do. Sure, you can clean out your closet or play stupid board games with your little brother, but that doesn't change things. You still have no friends. You're still bored. But wait, you have one last chance. You hurry to the big yellow phone book. You look up Nick's phone number. You grab the phone and dial. It rings and rings. And then you hear Nick's voice. Hello? Why did you call him? He lives next door. <laughs> he doesn't believe him. <laughs> Finish your conversation on page 17. There. We got rerouted right back anyways. So this, this conversation is now canonically taking place over the phone. Yes. Not in person. Yes. Okay. Let's just have that in mind as we go through mind. this. Just in yes. case. Yep. The horror club sounds great. Count me in. I'll meet you in front of your house at nine o'clock tonight. Nick says. You agree and say goodbye. Then you rush into your kitchen to find your parents. You tell them you've made a friend and you've been invited to a club meeting. They're so happy for you. Of course, you don't tell them the meeting is in a deserted, boarded up old house. At nine o'clock, you join. Okay, well, fine. It's they, they got it sorted. At mm, nine o'clock, you fair. join with Nick under the elm tree at your front yard. A skinny, fidgety girl with messy, long, dark hair waits with Nick. This is Debbie. He tells you. She's a member of the club, too. Hi. Debbie says. You can barely see her face under all her thick hair, and she always seems to be squirming about. You wonder what's with this strange girl. You follow your new friends up the hill to the end of a long, dark street. The farther you go, the fewer the houses, fewer houses there are. At the end of the road, all the streetlights are out. The sky is pitch black. If it weren't for Nick's flashlight, you'd probably trip over your own feet. There it is. Nick says, pointing. Bat Wing Hall. Giant title, fade to black. Turn to page 96. Uh. Bart. <laughs> Won't you talk me to Bat Wing Hall? <laughs> uh, turn to page 96. <laughs> A huge dark shadow looms at the end of the street. It's the mansion. You stop walking and gaze up at it. Nick shines his flashlight at the old house on the hill. Batwing Hall is a two-story, old-fashioned house. All the windows that aren't boarded up are broken. Loose shingles flap from the roof, paint peels from under weathered sides of the house. It looks as if no one has lived here for hundreds of years. You climb up the sagging porch with Nick and Debbie. Tall, overgrown trees and bushes cast eerie shadows across the deserted lawn. Please, Arthur. Debbie whispers to Did you. That Kinda. Did that get through the noise gate? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Isn't this place awesome, Debbie whispers to you. Really cool. You agree? This place has been empty for two years. Nick tells you. Ever since crazy old Professor Krupnik died. No one will buy it since it's haunted. 
Debbie explains. You notice she's chewing nervously at the ends of her long hair. Yuck! The front door was boarded up until we figured out how to pry it open. Debbie says. She points to the large wooden door. Let's go! You take a step forward. Stop! Nick shouts. Get down! Now! If you do as Nick says, hurry to page 19. If you ignore him and head for the door, go to page 85. I mean... <laughs> Who do we trust more? <laughs> Nick or the door? <laughs> uh, I... Well, Nick or Debbie, because Debbie's, uh, Debbie's pointing towards the door. It's true, but it seems in this situation that Nick notices something wrong with the situation and Debbie is just like, Debbie also needs to be warned. So it's it, this is sort mm. of like, you hear a call to get down because, a, you know, your head's out the window and a stop sign's coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you pull your head back or <laughs> just keep on Let's pull your head back on page 19. Yeah. I mean, hey, if this is the one that that gets us, I I'm, I'm fine to eat it. <laughs> we pull it, yeah, we 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 listen. What is it? You cry as your bo what? You cry as your body hits the ground. That's you dropping to the yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to be careful. Nick whispers. If anyone catches us going in through the front door, we could be in big trouble. We're not really allowed to be in here. You nod and watch Debbie as she squirms and glances around nervously. You wonder why your new friends are so jumpy. You can't imagine how anyone could possibly see you in the darkness, but you figure Nick and Debbie know what they're doing. You stand and follow Nick and Debbie across the porch, keeping as quiet as possible. You pull off the broken boards on the front door. You enter the dark house. The air in the entryway is stale and dusty. You hold back a sneeze. Nick motions for you to follow him. You creep after Nick and Debbie down a dark hallway. The floorboards creak loudly with each step. Then you enter a big, dimly lit living room. A broken chandelier sways from the ceiling. The faded wallpaper hangs in pieces from the walls. Dirty sheets cover what appear to be old sofas and chairs. And then you see them. Turn to page 75. Oh. Gifts be all good. Put <laughs> ourselves to the test. Tie a napkin around your neck, Sherry, and we want it. Sorry? Huh? That's the, the, that, was, that was in the background of the uh, <laughs> of the, the hole? Yeah, the scariest thing at Disney lawsuit. <laughs> 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 Ooh. <laughs> this is our <laughs> podcast now. <laughs> All right. Four kids sit in a circle on the living room floor. A big yellow candle flickers in the center. They all turn and stare at you. No one seems happy to see you. You stand awkwardly as Nick introduces you and says, This is our newest member. What are you talking about? Cries a girl with short, red, curly hair. She glares at you. I've brought a new member to the horror club. Nick Not repeats. today. <laughs> Big Al! exclaims a larger boy <laughs> with bulging arm muscles. Why not? Debbie asks, squirming next to you. Didn't anyone tell you? Asks another girl. Tonight's the special night. You've got to get that kid out of here. We're not telling stories tonight. The plan has changed. Oh, discover what's happening tonight on page 128. I don't have this many children voices inside of me. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> uh, no more children. Don't introduce another child. No. Only Bigs Al from now on. I've been held back <laughs> a lot, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> We're gonna run into a couple people who've been held back delinquent for three decades at this point, at least. Yeah. Uh, Nick and Debbie quickly leave your side and huddle together with the other kids. You can hear them arguing, arguing about you. Then one voice rises above the others. But today is game day. You know what that means? I don't. You suddenly call out. You're sick of standing there. You want to know what's going on. It works. All six kids stop arguing. The girl with the red hair steps towards you. Marcy. She tells you. There are no stories tonight. We're playing games instead, but new members can't play. It's the rule. Can't you break the rules just this one time? These aren't ordinary games. 
warns the boy with the large muscles rubbing his temples. These games are scary, really scary. The scarier the better, you announce bravely. This starts another argument. Some kids want you to stay and play. Others want you to leave. Debbie hurries over to your side. Through her mane of dark hair, she whispers, Go home. Go home now. But at that moment, Marcy announces, It's decided. You can stay and play games with us. Great, you say, ignoring Debbie. <laughs> what are we playing? Learn about the games on page 66. Play Valorant. Go to page 122. Mm, okay, I think I think we should go for 66 on this one. Yeah, let's I 66. haven't played Valorant. 66. <laughs> <laughs> that just won't stop. I haven't I haven't played it either. Full stop. <laughs> that just, nor have I. <laughs> it just seems like uh, I'll, pull a game. Go. <laughs> Boom, Valorant. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Uh page 66. The game? The game is called The Hunt. Marcy tells you. I am captain of the blue team, and Nick is captain of the red team. Good. That's all I need to know. I'm ready to play. Now, you watch as Nick picks Debbie and a skinny boy named Connor to be on his team. Connor has short, bristly hair and a very strange smell. <laughs> well, hey. As Connor walks by, you decide he smells as if he's been lying in a capital D dumpster. <laughs> The dumpster, yeah. <laughs> it's just like every there's no reason the dumpster needs to be capitalized here unless they really want to sell it. <laughs> oh no, it's I'm already working on voice lines for it because it's gonna come down the line. This, <laughs> this is a character being introduced here. Yeah, exactly. For the blue team, Marcy chooses a beautiful girl with long blonde hair and green eyes. Her name is Lara. She smiles shyly at you. Marcy also picks the guy in the muscle shirt. I am Martin. The kid says, pounding you on the back. Welcome to the horror club. He laughs, then flexes his muscles. You step back. <gasps> Barton's arm is bigger than your whole body. That's three on each team, Marcy announces. Our new member can join either one. She turns it's to It's up to you. Which team will you join? Would you rather hang out with Nick, Debbie, and Connor on the red team or go with Laura, Marcy, and Martin on the blue team? Oh, my God. This is, like, the most... Like, there, there's, like... This is just, like, taste at this point, you know? Mm hmm Like, I don't think we've ever gotten... I don't think we've ever gotten a choice quite like this where we can't really deduce strategy. <laughs> if right, if so that makes sense. I think there's a small amount of oh, deduction that can happen in here. And yeah. the small version of it is that Debbie was comfortable until everyone else was here. She was comfortable when Nick was around. She was comfortable when it was just Nick and us. It's true. She was uncomfortable and told us to leave. She did, she did like a get out moment. It's true. It's true. It's true. Uh, so which, I think possibly that could be a little bit safer, but also like, Connor and Debbie, in my mind, at some, like, some part of me feels like they are uh, mythological beasts. Like, they are horror creatures taking the form of children at this point, it's and that is true. why they are so weirdly described. That's true. Yeah. Also, it, it Nick says, I feel like the implication is that the house was empty, you know? We, mm -hmm. Nick, where where's Nick come from? What's his intent? I don't know. I mean, I feel like maybe they're all monsters to be to be QH. His but. first name is Professor Krupp. Professor Krupp? Nick? Professor Krupp Nick. Oh. Isn't isn't that the name of the person we <laughs> Oh my god. It might I actually legitimately you know think what? it's possible. I think you cracked the case. <laughs> um <laughs> Do you want to get to know uh the other team then or <laughs> Um yeah, let's do it. Okay, what's that? Is that red? Wait, the way. So that phrase. would be blue. blue team. Laura, Marcy, and Mon. All right, all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Welcome I'm to the blue team. Marcy says with a smile. Glad you're on the team. Martin adds. He crushes your hand with a hearty handshake. Also, I'm happy, Big Al. Uh, Number two's here. God, damn it. <laughs> so what? What? How? 
what are we playing? You asked? The game is called The Hunt. Well, it tells you. What are we hunting for? You ask as Marcy's voice drops down to a croaking whisper. The creepiest, most terrifying things we can find, she says. We vote on what team finds the scariest stuff. Martin explains. If you haven't chickened out by then, you'll become an official member of the horror club. Don't worry about me. I love a good scare. Come on, let's get this game going. You follow your teammates outside. Marcy goes first. Her flashlight beam bounces around the overgrown yard, making weird yellow shadows. You begin scanning the yard, but then Martin stops you. Not here. You're the newest member. You have to pass the test. Test? You don't like the sound of that. Martin grins and points across the street. You go there. The cemetery. Turn to page 106. Oh, we don't even get to choose not to go through the cemetery yeah. here. So I actually think the other path may have been hanging out with all of those uh, creatures. Could be. They want you to search the cemetery all by yourself. You're about to say, no way, Jose. Wait, it's not even in quotes. That's, <laughs> it's just like, it's not in quotes. It's just, you're about to say, say no way, Jose. But then you mm -hmm. figure out that that's just what they expect you to do. You'll show them. Great. I bet I'll find the winning object. You even, you even kind of mean it. After all, if the game is won by finding the scary stuff, then your teammates just handed you an easy score. What, what, what better place to look than a cemetery? You give your teammates the thumbs up, the thumbs up, and hurry across the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the cemetery is really old, and most of the gravestones are chipped and crumbling. As you stumble over a lumpy grave, you feel something grab at your ankle. You yelp and jump back. Phew, it was just a gnarled root. The moonlight casts an eerie glow, creating strange sat shadows. You carefully make your way towards a small building. There's just enough light for you to read the words Krupnik Crypt carved into the stone over the doorway. Here's your chance to impress your new friends. You know you will find something scary inside a crypt, but do you have the nerve to enter? Find out on Let's page... choose between our available options of find out on page 69 and... I'm on page 69. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you approach the heavy for, stone. For the podcast yes. listeners, there were no other choices. There's no choices. <laughs> I'll go. I mean, there's always the second choice. It's close the book and go home. Uh, but to be fair, I'm no baby. I'm an adult man. You approach the heavy stone door of the crypt. Inst instead of a doorknob, it has a thick iron ring. Chiseled into the stone above the ring are these words. Who turns the stone will grow bat bones. What could that possibly mean, you wonder? A sudden movement draws your attention. Near the top of the crypt, you see a small hole about your size. While you watch, a tiny black bat flies out of the hole and flutters off into the night. It says, I'm the one on the cover. Outrageous, <laughs> you think. Maybe you can catch a bat inside the crypt. That would win the contest for sure. But how will you get inside? The door is covered with cobwebs. Obviously, it hasn't been opened in a long time. Maybe you could climb to the top of the crypt and crawl in through the hole the bat came out of. Or maybe you should just try and pull the big stone door open. It might work. Which will you try? If you crawl through the hole, go to page 32. If you try to open the stone go door, go to page 9. I mean... <laughs> I love that the simplified version of this page is you see a plinth that says, don't open the stone door. Do you want yes. to open the stone door? Yes. Who turns the stone will grow bat bones. To, to be fair, we don't know that growing bat bones is bad. I would imagine they're yeah, yeah. very hollow like birds and thus yes. weak and frail. But you know yeah. what? That would be pretty scary to show our friends that we were just a bat though oh god you're right except if uh mark never shakes our hand again ah. we're losing the arm <laughs> it's <laughs> it turns into a fine dust in his meaty sweaty <laughs> palm <laughs> yes uh you mm -hmm. will make a nice uh, kool-aid with our bones and his sweat uh would you like to crawl through the hole i think we must <laughs> 
All right. Well, you decided to climb into the crypt through the hole. The stone wall looks way too heavy to budge. The crypt is covered with thick carvings, so it's easy to climb up to the top. You push your arms and head into the hole and start to wiggle through. It's so dark inside, you can't see a thing. As soon as you get your shoulders through, you hear a sound that makes you freeze. Scrunk. Yes, thank you. Scrunk. <laughs> and, then, and then the third one that goes, scrunk. It sounds as if something slimy is climbing up the wall towards you. And now you hear another sound. A low moan. There's a moaning something climbing your way. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> you try to wiggle back out, but you discover you're stuck. Scrunk, scrunk. <laughs> the moaning thing is coming closer. You push and pull. You twist and turn. Nothing. You can't budge. You scream. Help! Your voice echoes horribly in the stone room. You begin to kick on the outside of the crypt, hoping your friends will hear you. Help! Help! It's a weird feeling to be terrified and embarrassed at the same time. You don't know which will be worse. For the moaning thing to get you, or for your friends to come to the crypt and wind up staring right at your rear. What? Right at your rear end. Rear end. Ah. <laughs> For the moaning thing to get you or for your friends to come to the crypt and wind up staring right at your rear end. <laughs> oh no, fair. I might die. Oh no. Well, people might see my batoot. They, they might see my b panted batoot. I like you're just you're wearing the pants. Panted batoot. I mean, like, I feel like you're just This, this isn't the end. You're just stuck there for a bit. Yeah. That's fine. I'm just like the, the I've just got to dissociate myself from. Oh no! I could. I'd be dead, but I'd be dead if they see my little hiney. Oh no! <laughs> I'd be fine being dead if they didn't just see my little butt as well. <laughs> my little bum bum. All right, go to page nine because we're gonna try and open the door. Because apparently that. Is, apparently we want to grow bat bones. Yeah, apparently. Whoop. And got it. You step up to the door and grasp the ring with both of your hands. It's covered with rust and cobwebs. You have a feeling it hasn't been moved in a long time. You pull on it, but the thing won't budge. You clutch the ring even tighter and pull it with all of your weight. A hideous screeching noise fills the air. What is making that ghastly sound? Slowly, slowly, the heavy stone door swings open. Holding your breath, you tiptoe inside. You see a large casket sitting on a stone platform in the middle of the dark room. For a moment, you can't move. You stare at the casket and think, there's a dead person in there. A dead person! Yikes, something just grabbed your hair. You brush away and gasp. A bat flutters off into the distance, its fangs glinting into the moonlight. Maybe, so maybe catching a bat isn't such a great idea, you decide. Why? You quickly search the tomb for scary stuff to bring back to your teammates, but you find nothing except dust and cobwebs. With a final glance, you leave the tomb and rejoin your friends. There's only one problem. You don't see them anywhere. You're all alone. And we Go didn't get anything? Page 93. We no, didn't... not at all. We survived. Interesting. And also, our little batoot is still <laughs> and well... You know what? People haven't even perceived it. They don't even know yeah. if we have a rear end. <laughs> yeah. <It's> Schrodinger's batoot. <laughs> Who knows? Lara! Martin! Marcy! The only answer is the wind rustling through the trees. Your eyes search the cemetery, but your gaze falls only on crumbling headstones. You glance across the street at the mansion, but it's completely dark. Has everyone gone home? Another bat flies by, and you decide not to wait around. You race out of the cemetery and head for home. Later that night, you don't feel very well. Your shoulders ache, and your fingers feel stiff. Maybe you're getting sick. You hope not. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss soccer practice. You climb into bed and drift into a troubled sleep. When you awaken a few hours later, it's still dark, and you feel even worse. Maybe a drink of water would make you feel better. As you get up, you notice your hands seem to be very stiff. You glance down to see something dark between all your fingers. It must be the shadows in the room, you think. Your feet don't seem to be working very well, but somehow you make your way right to the bathroom. You reach up to the... Flip the light but the light switch isn't where it's supposed to be. Instead, it's three feet above you, and the bathroom mirror is even higher. 
What's going on? I think we got a catch a bat at this point. I think we caught bat. <laughs> we, we... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Bat is contagious. Yes, you exactly. You have caught bat. You caught bat. <laughs> you sorry. You you. It's uh. You know, phrasing was important here. You caught bat. What's going on? Hurry. Turn to page one twenty four. I mean, I think I know what's going on. I read. Mm -hmm. I read the plinth. Uh, somehow, since you went to bed, your bathroom has grown ten times its normal size. Uh huh. Or you've <laughs> shrunk. <laughs> I must be dreaming. You think? You climb up to the bathroom sink. I, I feel like, <laughs> yeah, maybe something's wrong when you have to climb up to the bathroom sink uh, to stare mm -hmm. in the mirror. The face gazing out at you from the mirror is not your own. It's the furry face of a small hairy creature with a short nose, huge ears, and tiny white fangs. It's the face of a bat. You wink your right eye. To your horror, the bat in the mirror winks at the same time. The bat in the mirror is you! Noise gate, probably. Uh. <laughs> it just, it's, I can only imagine, and honestly, maybe it's better that way. <laughs> Pretty much. You scream. No. no, but as a tiny squeak... This can't be real, you think. It's got to be a dream, right? You try and pinch yourself, but you can't work your bat fingers. You continue to stare at your ref your bat reflection, horrified. How could this have happened? You think back to the last evening. You try and remember every detail. You hung out with your new friends at the horror club. There was the contest to find the scariest things. You remember something else. Something that sends a chill down your furry little back. What do you remember? Turn to page 102. I mean... You remember the Krupnik crypt, and the only living creature you saw was the bat that flew out of the tomb. With a gnawing fear, your mind plays over the words carved in the crypt. Who turns the stone will grow bad bones. Yes, you should have realized it was a warning. I, we tr we tried. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you I had to go. You to do. Uh, do it or die. Do it or they'll see your bum bum. <laughs> but no, you had to go ahead and turn that stupid stone. That must have been how this happened. You try to frantically remember everything about the crypt, every, every little detail that could help you. You picture the crypt and suddenly recall that you left the stone door open. Maybe if you turn the stone again, closing the door of the crypt, you'll be transformed back. Should you return to the cemetery now, you're not sure you can even find it in the dark. Or would it be better to go to sleep and wait until morning? Maybe when you wake up, you'll be back to normal. Um, we're a bat. Like, it doesn't really matter that it's yeah. nighttime. Yeah, absolutely. We are also a bat. Yeah. We were like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the only thing I can really think about at the moment. Although, I will say, actually, one hint that may have uh, alluded to us previously is the bat escaping prior to us may have been a person who was locked in there previously. And, you know, one person's a bat at all times. We freed them. Now we're the bat. And uh, Debbie knew that we were going to become a bat. Hmm. Ah, Maybe. yes. Someone, oh, there always has to be a bat. We are mm -hmm. currently carrying the bat, the little tiny itty bitty bat torch. And let's pass it on to some other chop. Let's go to the cemetery, right? Let's do it. All right. Squeak, squeak. You decide to return to the cemetery tonight. You can't stand to be a bat another second. At least try it. Don't, like, come on. <laughs> Without a laugh. With the last shuddering, you look at your new bat self. You climb down from the sink and you crawl up the wall to the window's ledge. From your new, shorter bat's eye view, the yard looks very different, very far away. Even though you're on only on the second floor. Well, you got wings, might as well try them. You're a little nervous about your lack of flight experience, but you've got no choice. You try flapping your wings, and the next thing you know, you're lifting up, up, out into the dark night air. The wind rushes beneath your wings and you soar higher and higher baby you sneak a peek down at the yard far below big mistake for just a moment you're so scared you forget to flap your wings and instantly begin to plummet to the ground frantically you begin to flapping again and manage to level out flying is not as easy as it looks you realize you try to turn to the right and find yourself flying upside down instead then you bump into the side of a tree after some practice you begin to get the hang of flying but unfortunately you made so many twists and turns while you're learning you have no idea where you are now go to page 31. Just glad that we're finally taking a moment to just enjoy being a bat. Yeah, we're just like, we're just vibing. 
just vibing. I'd I'd like to I'd like to be a bat for a bit. If I could be a bat for a bit, that'd be great. Oh yeah, if there was a reversible bat potion, yeah, like a forty eight hour bat potion, sign me up. Would you take a bat potion if it said uh, temporary bat potion, eighty five percent chance it's reversible? No, ninety. Yes, it's exactly <laughs> between those two numbers. Is... <laughs> That's where my limit is. Hell, I'd do it at 20, dude. <laughs> <laughs> squeak, squeak. Bats pay bills? Bats pay taxes? <laughs> no, I'm doing it at 20. Yeah. Bats have depression? I don't know. <laughs> there's, the, there's no sign of your backyard, and you can't recognize any of the houses. And where's the crypt? You don't have a clue. <laughs> Sorry, the bat. Uh, we're a bat. That's so good. To make things worse, your bat eyes don't see well enough to help you figure out where you are. Echo locate you, ding dong. But your exactly. ears are a different matter. You're working so hard learning to fly, you don't pay much attention to your bat hearing. But now you know. No, this is excellent. It's just bat is not. It's not an adjective. And, and it yet. does make me feel like we are playing as Batman. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's, it's it just like, it feels like it should be in capital letters, camel case, and then have a trademark. That is what all yeah. of this feels like. In fact, At some point, we will throw a batarang. Yes. In fact, it's so good, if you really concentrate, you can get a clear picture of the things making sounds around you. Off to the right, you hear a big moth flapping its wings. The flapping sounds like soft clapping. Somehow, the sound gives you a complete image of the moth. Below you, the loud humming of a mosquito sounds like a jet taking off. This is pretty cool. Now your super sharp ears hear something more familiar. Something you might help have helped figure out where you are. Oops. <laughs> you turn towards the sound. You see a man and a woman walking a small dog in the early morning darkness. Ask the couple for help on page 54 or fly off on your own on page 70. So, I mean, two thoughts. Strangers don't take kindly mm. to bats asking for directions. B, mm. there's been no voices in a long time and they have voices. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I can only imagine. Also, uh, who knows? There... Fair on both accounts. I like the idea that we could possibly fly up to them. And they'd be like, oh, uh, right. Two down the corner, one off to the left, and then 100 meters down. Enjoy your day, bat. <laughs> Bye-bye, bat. Let's do it. I, I gotta Let's know. Let's ask him for help. I gotta know. Oh, you sweep, uh, sweep, swoop over to the couple. You're just about to ask them for help when a woman notices you. <laughs> and then, of course... <laughs> <laughs> Did that one get got by Not the, even uh... close. <laughs> about help. Her scream is so loud it scares you. You try to fly away, but you still don't have much control. You swoop in the wrong direction right into her long hair. You're completely trapped. Your mouth is full of wiry hairs. Hairs wrap themselves around your neck and pull at your claws. You struggle to free yourself, but it only makes things worse. <laughs> Ack! The woman screams. Get away! The man shouts. He grabs for you. I'm not really a bat. You yell, but all that comes out is a squeak. The woman swats at you hard. Suddenly you're free. You flutter up away from the couple. From the top of the street light, you see a welcome sight. Your own house. You've had enough flying for one night. Weirdly, you flutter home. You swoop in through your open window and to try, decide to try again in the morning. <laughs> well. So we left our house. Yes. Flew around yes. for a bunch of time. Yes. Approached this couple. Yes. And then as soon as we uh, left from them, we immediately saw our house. So we didn't actually leave home. What we did is left, circled around our house, and returned. It's true. Um, we could... <laughs> do you want... <laughs> do we want to not ask the couple for help, or do you want to just continue on from... Oh, that no, point? this is fine. Okay, good. All right. Let's go. Uh, 53, right? Mm-hmm. You wake up the next morning in your own bed feeling normal. 
You scrunch your eyes tight and raise your hand, your own hands to your face. You're almost afraid to look. You count to three and force your eyes open. Hooray! No more bat wings! Your hands are back. Everything that happened that last night must have been a dream, a terrible dream. Oh, no. The <laughs> debt, the taxes, the depression. Oh, no! no. Oh, I have a meeting in the morning. You rush to the bathroom to examine your human face in the mirror. There's no trace of whiskers or fur or big bat's ears. You've never been so happy to see your goofy grin. You brush your teeth, comb your hair, and get dressed, whistling the whole time, ironically because you liked being a bat. You skip down the stairs and into the kitchen. The aroma of pancakes cooking fills the room. How many pancakes this morning? Your mom asks. Three. You tell her. You pour a ton of syrup on the snack and start to eat. But today the pancakes don't taste good. They're too soft and the syrup is too sweet. You can't help but think they'd be better with beetles on them. I think I'll eat later. You tell your mom. You stand and slip on a jacket. You step outside in the bright sunshine and discover you've made the biggest mistake of your life. Bleh. Hurry to page 40. We've been papired. Huh? You stand outside and your skin feels like it's on fire. The sun's glare forces your eyes shut and you duck back inside, wondering what's wrong. Then you go out to try again. <laughs> the same thing <laughs> happens. For some reason, you can't stand Must to be out of the sun. <laughs> Must have just been crazy random happenstance. Let's try that again. With growing horror, the answer comes to you. You must try again. <laughs> you're still a, you're still a bat. That's got to be it. You're in human form now, but the transformation must still be in effect. Bats, you remember, sleep during the day. They don't go out in the sun. You need some time to think. I have a headache. You tell your mom. I'm going to go back to bed. Are you sick? She asks, pressing her hand against your forehead. You don't seem to have a fever. I'll be all right. You tell her. I just need to sleep. You go back to your room, turn off all the lights, and pull down the shades. And you crawl back into bed and think about your problem. What are you going to do? And then the answer comes to you. Go to page 74. Go to the crypt. Go to the crypt and close it. <laughs> you got to go God. back to the crypt right now. <laughs> I've been trying. <laughs> Luckily, your mom works on Saturday. Are you sure you'll be all right? Yeah, luckily your mom is not a bat and has to go to job. Uh, she asks, mm. poking her head into the dark bedroom before she leaves. I'm fine. You tell her. Just, just tired. The second you hear the front door slam, you pull on a turtleneck, a heavy coat, gloves, dark glasses, and a hat. That should protect you from the sun. Only it doesn't. You manage to get as far as the end of the driveway before your skin starts to blister. You have... <laughs> You'll have to wait until dark. This is just such an elaborate <laughs> mission to get from our house to the crypt. Yep. <laughs> this just we're ping ponging. <laughs> that evening, you tell your parents you're going to a movie with a friend. Which one? Batman. From the window in your room, you watch the sun sink below the horizon. As soon as it sets, you turn to leave for the mansion. But the floor suddenly has become very far away. You watch in horror as black hairs sprout all over your arms, your fingers stiffen and black webs spread between them. Your mouth tingles as fangs burst through your gums. Burst through your gums. I mean, birth, I guess, but like, you. You hang your furry head as you realize the sad truth. You're a bat. Again. Flutter to page 92. <sighs> this old rigmarole. Oh my god. Man, nobody, nobody wants to talk to a bat. <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> here we go do you want to yeah, hey do you want to take a page oh sure <laughs> I was just going to try and do Foley in the background but I mean yeah you can do that too you don't want to spend the rest of your life as a bat you've got to get through the crypt you decide to fly luckily the window is slightly open you duck through it and glide out into the cool evening air you realize you need to practice using your wings First, you try flapping. Then you soar up and down. It's kind of fun, dipping and swooping over the backyard. You also 
like your cool sonar system, <laughs> through your super bat's ears, you're able to hear thousands of times better than you could as a human. Insects sound as loud as cars did when you were a kid. Mm. Something making a flapping sound to your right. Without even looking, your sonar tells you it's a gnat, a thundering buzz, mm. like the sound of a chainsaw comes from a June bug. You cannot tell, you cannot only tell what the insects are, you can tell where they are. Your sonar informs you that a large moth is fluttering in the trees just ahead. The thought of a moth makes your mouth water. You realize you're very, very hungry. A moth? You're gonna eat a moth? <laughs> Find out what a moth tastes like, turn to page 137, no other option. I mean, hey, why not? Ooh, I feel like we've got voices on the page after this, though. Yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, take back. We'll swap back over then, then. Okay, okay. All right. Your bat's, your bat's stomach. <laughs> we gotta stop with the bad adjective. <laughs> your bat stomach insists that moths are delicious. Following the sonar, you swoop into the tree and grab the insect in your jaws. Its body feels soft and powdery, and the bitter flavor makes you want to hurl. But you're starving. Gagging, you swallow. Then you zoom after another moth. When you finish your mothy meal, you fly straight for the graveyard and the Krupnik crypt, landing on top of the open door. The door is bigger than you remembered, but then you're a lot smaller. You drop onto the ground and try pushing against it. It doesn't move. Even an inch. You fly into it, but that's all that happens. All that happens is you bruise your wings. What will you do? As a bat, you're too weak to close the door. When you're a human, you can't leave the house. Then you think of your horror club team. Maybe you can get them to help you. But who should you ask first? Martin's the strongest. Laura's the friendliest. But Marcy seems the bravest. Quick, decide who to fly to. <laughs> fly to their house. Uh, Martin, Laura, Marcy. Hmm. Well, I mean, the thing that they did tell us constantly about Martin is dudes got bulging muscles. My man's got muscles on muscles on muscles. But we were able to move that's, it by yes. ourselves. That's what I was going to say is I the muscles, I, I mean, maybe it's the, the important thing. I think it's a red herring too since, yeah, we didn't seem that strong and we could do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Lara's the least known, I think, of these. We've had like two lines from her, thankfully, because she doesn't have a voice in my mind yet. So, uh, how about yeah. Marcy? Sounds good. I think Laura doesn't have a voice in the noise gate either, if I remember correctly. <laughs> All right, to Marcy. You want Marcy's help. You swoop around the neighborhood looking for Marcy's family name on a mailbox. At last, you find it in front of its small two story brick house. You peer into all the windows until you find Marcy alone in the living room. She seems to be babysitting her little brother, who's about two years old. You find an open window, then fly into the house. You perch on a curtain in the living room. Below, Marcy and her brother are playing a game with cardboard letters. While you watch, Marcy moves some of the letters. B. A. T. <laughs> Marcy tells her brother. That spells bat, Daryl. Can you say bat? Hungry. The little boy cries. I'll get some jello. See if you can spell bat. She disappears into the hall. What a luck! The bat wing hall. Uh, what luck you think? The letters are small and lightweight. You're sure you'll be able to move them and write yourself a message to Marcy. You swoop down to the floor. The letters are in a big box and you start to sort through the letters when Daryl suddenly reaches for you. Doggy, he not cries. Even close, buddy. Not even close to doggy. He grabs one of your wings and pulls. Turn to page 42. I'm not a dog. You pull away. He pulls back. You finally free yourself. Doggy. Daryl repeats as he reaches for you again. I'm almost through. Marcy calls from the kitchen. You have to move fast. You grab a claw full of letters and fly to the other side of the room. Daryl starts crawling towards you. Quickly, you arrange the letters in a message. Help me, Help I am me, a I bat. Am a bat. <laughs> it's okay. Oh my god. Help me, I am a bat. 
You place the last letter just as Daryl reaches you. He grabs at you, but you fly up to the ceiling and perch on the chandelier. Mar <laughs> Mommy, I'm a bat. Marcy returns to the living room with a bowl of jello. Here's something to eat. She tells her brother. Then she notices the message. Did you do that, Daryl? She asks in amazement. I, I can't believe it. You're genius. It was me. You squeak from the ceiling to let Marcy know who really wrote the message. You swoop down. She takes one look at you and shrieks. Then she grabs the fly swatter from the table and begins swatting at you. This is no good. Should you give up on Marcy and escape or try once more to communicate with her? Uh... Hmm... I don't want to try and communicate with her. I want to give it a shot, but it's making me wonder if the brave element was not for her to help us, but for her to not be scared of us. Mm -hmm. But I'm ha I am I am curious nonetheless to see how this would end if it was an end. For sure, for sure. So let's go out. And, so what, one twenty three. Let's do it. Marcy chases you all over the room, swatting. You squeak. I'm not a bat. I'm a human. <laughs> I'm human 66. Yes. But she can't hear your words. How can you get her to recognize you? You glance down at the cardboard letters on the floor and get an idea. You fake her out with a quick twist and swoop towards the letters. You grab the H and fly up to the top of the bookcase with it. Put that down, Marcy shrieks. You put it down, all right. You lean it against the book where she can see it. Then flying as fast as you can, you snag a letter E and place it next to the H. Marcy still holds the fly swatter up ready to hit you, but now she's staring at you curiously. Quickly, you add the LP and to the HE. <laughs> Ooh, that's kind of, fun. kind of a beat there. Uh, you manage mm. to spell help on the top of the bookshelf. You hover near Marcy, and if you crossed your web fingers, if you could... Cross your web fingers, you would. Marcy gazes at the letters on the bookshelf, and then she stares at you. Glances back at the letters. It, it was you, she says finally. It, it wasn't, Daryl. You made the message. You feel like bat cheering, but all you can do is bat squeak. Quickly, you swoop back down for more letters. Turn to page 50. I can't believe it. A bat handing me a message, Marcy exclaims. She beckons to you. Here, Bat. Here, Bat. Let me get a better look at you. Gratefully, you fly over to her. Quick as a cat, Bat. She grabs you and shoves you in a drawer. Oh. You squeak. Let me out of her. <laughs> this is so cool. You can hear Marcy saying. A bat that can spell. We can go on TV. We'll be famous. I'm not a bat. You cry. I'm a human. Let me finish my message. But Marcy isn't interested in your message. I'll find a box to put it in, she says to herself. Your super bad ears hear her leave the room. A moment later, the drawer opens. Daryl's wide eyes stare straight at you. Doggy! He cries. Turn to page 132. Leave me alone, Tub. You squeak. You crawl out of the drawer and swoop over to the letters. You've decided to spell out your name. That way, Marcy will know the bat is really you. You start searching through the pile of letters. You hear Daryl moving towards you. You search faster. Daryl's toddling closer, but he's excited. So excited, he falls down. You found the first letter of your first name. Quickly, you search for the other letters. You've just finished finding all the letters in your name when Daryl reaches you. You look up to see him towering over you. He's about to lose his balance again. He reaches for the cabinet to steady himself. Oh, you're gonna pull that? Whoops, Daryl pulled the cabinet over. Unfortunately, it was very heavy. Even more unfortunately, you were directly beneath it. Too bad, now you won't even get to be on TV unless they come up with a new show called Flat Pet Tricks. <laughs> I mean, the end. <laughs> I know that they like having all of the ends have like a little bit of a soft punchline beforehand, but like what 
This one's a, a show s- called Flat Pet Tricks? This one's a stretch. <laughs> stretch like, flat. I would understand that if there was a real show called like Round Pet Tricks or like, you know. <laughs> Maybe there's something that I don't know about. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. That, that it's like, it rhymes with or something. I'm trying to figure out where we came from. Yes, I'm also trying to remember that. Um, uh, here, you want to pause? Sure. All right. We're there. 137. We are here. We are here. Right. So, what, Martin what or Laura? I mean, it seems, I still stand by the red herring vibe. Agreed. See, so, Laura. Absolutely. Is, I was kind of just waiting for you to say it. Yeah. Well, actually, let's deliberate. <laughs> I think Mm. it's Lara. You fly through the neighborhood checking out mailboxes. At last, you find a box with Lara's last name. When did we get their last names? By the way? Yeah. I don't know. Like, when when did we get their little last names? Is that just, is that another feature of being a bat I don't know about? Like we get, uh, yeah, we have bat perception of their bat last perception. Names. We get their social and their their last name and and everything like that. It's like what like uh, yep. sleeping dogs. At last, you mm-hmm. find a box with Laura's last name on it. You glide up to the house and you see Laura sitting on her bed with the phone beside her. The window's open, but you don't want to fly in and freak her out. You land quietly on the windowsill when she's not looking. You sneak in and perch on a picture frame above Laura's bed and watch. You know, not creepy. She mm. punches a number right into the phone. Hello, Marcy? She says. It's Lara. Uh-huh. Right. I've got a cool idea. Can you meet me at the mall tomorrow? Great. Uh, three o'clock at the fountain, okay? Okay, cool. Bye. She hangs up and punches in another number. This time, she talks to Martin. She tells him to meet her at the mall, too. Now she punches in another shorter number. Uh, hello, information? She says. I'd like the number of someone who just moved to town. She tells the operator your name and writes down the number. This is great. Laura's going to call you. You like her You like her best of all the kids you met. Finally, you're starting to make some friends in this town. Oh. I'm right here, you squeak from the picture frame. Turn to page 76. What was that noise? Laura cries, glancing up, and then she sees you. A bat! She shrieks. Gross, a bat! She jumps off her bed and tears tears out of the room. A moment later, she returns with a big can of bug spray. Get out of here! She shrieks. She turns the nozzle at you and then presses her finger down on the spray button. You don't know if bug spray can hurt bats, and you don't want to find out. You swoop Mm. out of the window before the spray can reach you. Don't come back, Laura screams, slamming the window shut. You're so upset you can barely flap your wings and as you fly home. How are you ever going to get anyone to help you? Will you have to remain a bat for the rest of your life? You slip into your room wondering what to do. You flutter over to your bed. There's a note on your pillow from your mom. You want, I mean, you want to do mom voice? Laura calls. Meet her at the fountain in the mall at 3 p.m. tomorrow. You immediately feel better. Laura invited you to the mall with Marcy and Martin. You've definitely been accepted as one of these new kids. Maybe they'll be able to help you. All you have to do is find a way to get to the mall without being fried by the sun. Will you be able to do it? Swoop to page 133. The next morning, you wake up as a kid again. You're pretty sure you can avoid being toasted if you stay out of the sun as much as possible and really cover up to be safe. You wear your hat, sunglasses, muffler, and gloves. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, I thought we were a bat, not a car. <laughs> vroom, vroom. Uh, muffler clothing. In English. It, oh, it's a, it's like a type of scarf. Oh, okay. Yeah, Why I've never heard that. Why are you wearing that kind of scarf? <laughs> uh, Marcy asks when you meet your friends at the mall. She and the others laugh. Maybe we were wrong about you. Martin teases. Maybe you're too weird for the horror club. Why are you wearing all those clothes? 
Marcy asks again. You'd better rethink this. You'd hate to lose the only friends you have. My mom. You say, rolling your eyes. I'm getting a cold and this is what she did to me? My mom's the same way. Lara agrees sympathetically. You'll have to wait for a better time to tell them the truth. So what's the plan? You ask. Let's check out the new science store. Laura suggests. I'd rather go to the movies. Dracula's about to start. Let's oh. <gasps> Let's let the newest member of the horror club decide. Marcy says, turning to you. Uh, hmm. It's up to you now. If you choose to check out the science store, turn to page 73. If you'd rather see Dracula, go to 108. I mean, what is a science store? <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm just getting popped down to the ball to buy some science. T test tubes, beakers, hazardous chemicals, mm -hmm. uh, theories. Uh, multiple different fidget toys and a chia pet. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so it's a sharper image. It's a Brookstone. Mm. It's one of them. Gotcha. That's a, I'm going to say exclusively say the science store when I refer to those novelty stores now. You know, the ones where <laughs> they have all of the uh, massage chairs in the fronts. The the science Good. store. What? <laughs> this... that, that's an important science right there. It's an important science. That's kinetics. It's kinetics. Uh, uh, I think we should check out the science store just because... I, I need know to know what a science probably. store is too. All right. Let's check out the science store. You tell your friends, holding back a snicker. <laughs> Maybe there will be something there that'll help you with your problem. Cool. Laura exclaims. She leads the way to the upper level. A big banner hangs from the front of the store, declaring, un declaring <laughs> Uncle Ed's Science Emporium. This looks promising, you think. You push through the door and the others follow you. Look at all this great gear. Martin There's all says. kinds of kits and experiments. Cool. Marcy points to an exhibit where you can examine your own fingerprints under a magnifying glass. Store? What are the... Hmm? At a store? What? I'm so... I'm more confused than ever. So is actually, it... this kind of is a little bit more familiar to me now that we get to this point, which is like... Having a bunch of different, like, kind of student science experiments, kind of like learning science through, you know, playing with these kinds of toys, yeah. kinds of things. Uh, huh. There was a store like that in a in a mall near me when I'm I grew jealous. up. I'm jealous. It, it, it sounds cool. It didn't have interactive exhibits, unfortunately. Oh, well. That would have been great. Yeah. The interactive exhibit is the cash register. Mm hmm. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Cool. What, what are those? Lara asks. You follow her to an exhibit of tropical insects. The insects are inside a glass case. You gaze at them in fascination. They're all colors of the rainbow, and some of the beetles are as big as mice. Yuck. You don't pay attention. Staring at the insects has reminded you how hungry you are. Instead of flying around and eating a couple dozen moths, you could just eat one of those beetles for a whole meal. No, you tell yourself, no, no, no. Boys don't eat bugs. But as you continue to gaze at the beetles, your mouth begins to wander. Suddenly, the bat in you takes over. Hurry to page 41. Boys don't eat bugs, but bats do. Boys don't eat bug, batty bug. You can't help yourself. You never see such a great display of bugs again. Quickly, you lift the lid on the exhibit and grab the biggest beetle and pop it in your mouth. Oos. Laura screams. Crunch goes the beetle. <sighs> Martin and Marcy rush over to the exhibit. Watch, Lara says, pointing to you in horror. You know your friends are staring at you, but you can't stop yourself. You, <laughs> you can't stop yourself. You pop beetle after beetle into your mouth. They crunch deliciously between your teeth. You don't stop eating until the police arrive to arrest you for <laughs> shoplifting rare insects. You end up in jail, but it isn't that bad. Your mom and dad bail you out in less than an hour. And while you hang upside down on the cell bars, you come up with the most amazing idea. An idea that makes you a millionaire. <laughs> Wow, this got wild. We found the good ending. <laughs> For days afterwards, you work in the kitchen and in the backyard. You chop, you mix, you taste. You add more ingredients and taste again. Perfect. 
created the biggest craze in the ice cream industry since Rocky Road. You will make a fortune with your new flavor, Beetleberry Crunch. Shh, don't give away the secret ingredient. That one that gives it the delicious crunch. The end. I... That... A th good ending. We are a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> that is, um... Huh. I think... I think we're still a bat, though. We're, of course we're still a bat. <laughs> you just, like... I'm a bat with a million dollars. Bat, you're gonna have well, a lot more taxes. It's... It's... I think the big problem here is that uh we forgot that we cared about being a bat we just ate a beetle and went you know what this is good enough i don't <laughs> care about my quest to become a human again yeah i want to work on this i mean to be fair it's all i was asking earlier like we mm. got what i wanted that being said settle i down am and be a bat i just settle down get a couple bugs be a bat but I am curious what, um, you know, the other path would be, the Dracula path. Do you know what lay before this? Uh, go to page 108. 108. Let's go to the movie. You suggest. It'll give you time to think of a way to ask for help. You line up for tickets and popcorn and settle into your seats. This movie is supposed to be really scary laura says with a shiver as soon as the lights start to dim you feel a familiar ache in your shoulders with horror you look down at your hands the webbing is growing in between your fingers D i uh -huh. what during the day i guess it's, yeah. it's by dark it's by darkness huh it it might just be by um instinct even <laughs> by proximity to draculus uh mm. apologies going to the bathroom you mumble oh. and quickly jump out of your seat the next instant you're a bat you can't stay in the aisle of the theater where someone could step on you so you fly up to the ceiling down below you hear laughter <laughs> look at that someone cries it's a real bat must be part of the movie what a publicity stunt! Someone shouts. Will you tell your friends the truth about what happened to you now? Or would it be better to show them back at Batwing Hall? Oh my god. Mm. They're absolutely just gonna moiter us, right? Again? I if would, we tell them now? I feel like probably. They probably sure. would. So 45? Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. You, you realize the truth sounds too batty. Besides, it'll be a lot easier to prove what happened if you're already at Batwing Hall. You fly outside into the light and instantly transform into a kid again. You wait for the movie to finish, then meet your friends in the lobby. Why, why don't you have a special meeting of the horror club just for the blue team? You suggest... I never got to tell a story, and I have one that's really scary. Good idea. The mall is a little bit boring. I have to go home first. Laura announces. Me too. Agrees Martin. We'll meet at Batwing Hall in an hour. It's cloudy, and you're able to ride the bus almost all the way to the mansion. The sunlight only stings a little as you make your way up the hill to the old house. Your friends arrive better ride before dark, you think. You know how tough it is to get anyone to listen to you while you're a bat. You glance over at the cemetery and shudder. That's where all your problems began. You breathe a sigh of relief once you've passed it by. But your relief doesn't last long. <gasps> a voice rumbles. You could swear you felt the ground shake. What do you do? Halt. Turn to page 113. Make a run for it. Page 109. I mean, we got told that Halt? It only feels appropriate. I'm happy. I'm happy to halt. It's probably There's not a good hope. idea to ignore a command like that. Your heart thudding in your chest, you stop and turn in the direction of the voice. At first, you're surprised that the figure before you is just an old man in a long white beard. You're a little embarrassed that you were so afraid. But then you notice the old guy's shape keeps shifting, as if he were made out of a gray mist. And then your jaw drops when you realize you can see right through him. 
I am the spirit of Professor Kropnik. <laughs> the old man bellows. He glares at you. And you have been disturbing my peace for the last two years. Now I will get my revenge. <laughs> you can't believe it. You're face to face with the ghost and it's mad at you. I haven't done anything. You quake. I only moved to town last week. Do you deny that you're a member of the horror club? The professor thunders. Well, it, you but I just joined. Silence! <laughs> the ghost shouts. I've had enough. It reaches out for you. You feel an icy chill throughout your body. Is this the end? Turn to page 57. Member of the horror club. Prepare to accept your punishment. <laughs> the ghost roars. What? Wait! You yell, leaping backwards. I have already been punished. When I was in Horror Club Friday night, I opened your tomb and it turned into a bat. So that was you. The professor ghost. Ex the professor's ghost exclaims. Far worse could have happened. Your little batute could have been shown to all your friends <laughs> after you got slapped up by a slime monster. But I suppose that's punishment enough. <laughs> but I don't want to be a bat. I want to be human. <clears throat> the ghost says after a moment. Perhaps we can help each other. If you'll assist me in getting rid of these pesky kids, I'll help you get back to your true form. How do you know I'll do it? Like, change me back and then I'll help you. But how do you know I'll do it? How do I know you'll do it? Sorry. <laughs> how do change I know you'll now, know I'll, I'll, I'll do you. I do it? How do we do it? <laughs> how do we do it? <laughs> we need to go back. No! The ghost thunders. That's my offer. Take it or leave it. Can you trust Professor Krupnik's ghost? Should you help him get to the horror club, get the horror club members out of his house? You don't really have a choice. Besides, he's probably the only one who can unbat you. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, is this us? We've been batted I, or unbatted? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Krupnik's the coolest character so far. I like him. I'll, I'll help you. Yeah. To help the ghosts, uh, help he helps you. Page 81. All right. Do you tell Professor Krupnik? I'll help you. Yes. I'll help you. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the ghost growls. Sorry, I didn't know what part we were on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ghost Man. growls, yes. Get these kids out of Batwing Hall and make sure they never come back. It's weird that a ghost would need your help, but you do as Professor Krupnik asks. When you get to the mansion, you peer through a window and see Marcy, Martin, and Laura sitting on the floor and talking. How can you make them leave? You know it'll be hard to scare them away. After all, they're members of the horror club. But maybe it'd be different if they knew the house really is haunted. Or maybe it'd be better to come up with a better place for the horror club to meet. Which will it be? Hmm... Maybe we could do it at our place? Friendship? Maybe we could do it next door to ours, because we know that that's being abandoned. We know no one actually lives there. That is true. I mean... I think if we convince them this place is haunted, they're just going to be like, oh, hell yeah, and stay. Yeah, that kind of seems like... It seems like a win. I'm happy to go to mm -hmm. 130. Yeah. You've decided to make your friends move the club. <laughs> You need to come up with someplace better than Batwing Hall. Then an idea comes to you. You know they won't be able to resist a challenge. I'm sorry I'm late. You tell them, entering the living room. I was at the graveyard and I found a way cool place for us to meet. But it might be too scary for you guys. No way. Martin protests. Are you sure? You Maybe ask. we should wait and ask the other members. Who needs them? Martin declares. Let's go for it. Yeah. Marcy chimes in. Let's check it out now. If it's spooky enough, it'll be the club's new home. Great. That was easier than you thought. You lead your friends to the cemetery. The old gravestones poke out of the ground at odd angles. They're broken and covered in moss, and all their writing has crumbled away. Whoa. Marcy crows. 
you were right. This is much scarier than Batwing Hall. Let's make this... She stops suddenly and stares at the ground in horror. You wonder what grabbed her attention, and then you see it. Breaking through the surface of the ground is a bony hand. Turn to page 63. <laughs> Noise gated. Help! Laura shrieks. It got me! She struggles as the hand begins to pull her into the ground. What is it? Marcy yells, terror in her voice. It's a corpse. It's pulling her under. You throw your arms around Laura, but you're no match for the powerful creature dragging her down. A moment later, you feel something clutching your own ankle. Uh, no. He no. Screamed. No. You hear Marcy and Martin screaming and see that rotting hands have grabbed them too. All four of you are being pulled deeper and deeper into the soft, rotten, smelling ground. Help us, Professor Krupnik. You call. You're up to your neck in soil. I got them out of the house. Now save us. At first, there's no answer. Then you heal and hear an evil-sounding, ghostly chuckle. <laughs> Why would I want to meet you? Why would I want you to meet in my graveyard any more than in my mansion? The ghost asks. You start to protest, but your mouth is filling up with dirt. Too bad, it looks like you learned the lesson the hard way. Never trust a ghost. The end. <laughs> That's the, the lesson. It. We are getting absolutely rocked by this yep. book. Uh, page 15. Page 15. Thank you. <laughs> this, is, this is the highest skill cap book. This is a skill issue, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be too hard to make the house seem haunted, especially since it is haunted. You turn to the ghost. That's, I mean, that's fair. I guess we could have... <laughs> you turn to the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> I have an idea, but uh, I need your help. You want me to help you? The ghost booms. Yeah. You reply and whisper your idea to him. All right. The ghost of Professor Krupnik grumbles. You're very relieved. Oh, great. You cry. After it works, you'll unbat me. We'll see. The ghost mutters. You don't like the sound of that, but you don't have any choice. You hurry back to the mansion. We've got to leave. You tell your friends. This place is haunted by the ghost of Professor Krupnik. Yeah, sure. Says Laura. <sighs> she yawns. At the moment, at that moment, the front door of the mansion creaks open. The ghost drifts into the room. That's a ghost? Asks Martin. It just looks like an old man. <laughs> Professor Krupnik moans. <laughs> Even if it is a ghost, it doesn't look too scary. Well, Marcy adds, you can't believe it. The horror clubs aren't even afraid of a real ghost. Um, This was a whispered plan. We got all up in Professor Krupnik's ear to say, Say ooh. <laughs> say, say ooh. ooh. Say ooh at him. <laughs> yeah, go get, wave your hands around. Go ooh, ooh, a little bit. Uh, um, um hmm. I, th I think we need to double down on the ghost. <laughs> okay. All right. Double down. 136. Please. You bet. It's important. We've got to stop meeting in the mansion. No way. One says. If you don't like it here, go form your own club. But you start to protest, but at that moment, Professor Krupnik's ghostly voice fills the room. You have failed. It moans. Now I must take matters into my own hands. The room suddenly fills with smoke and bright flashes of light. Your friends start to scream. Wait, you cry, but your voice comes out as a high-pitched squeak. In horror, you realize it's too late. You've turned back into a bat. You glance around to see that three other bats are flying around the living room in panic. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Laura squeaks in her bat voice. <laughs> Noise gate? It's the final boss of this podcast. <laughs> what's been hap What's happened? We've, we've all been turned into bats. You say sadly. 
Too bad you made the wrong choice, but at least you'll have someone to hang around with the end. Oh uh, my I shouldn't have trusted the ghost. God. Never trust a ghost. 103. Good idea. All right. It's amazing. Marcy, Lara, and Martin are acting as if they see ghosts every day. So much for scaring them out of the mansion. You need a new plan. Laura eyes Professor Krupnik. What's it like to be a ghost? She asks. The ghost seems startled by the question. It's... It's... He stammers. Now Marcy and Martin swarm around him, firing questions at him. Can you appear in other forms? How long have you been a ghost? What do you do all day? To your amazement, the ghost starts to smile. He holds up his shadowy hands. Slow down. I can only answer one question at a time. He actually seems to be enjoying the attention. Maybe it's lonely being a ghost. You get a great idea. Fellow teammates? You announce. I nominate Professor Krupnik as the newest member of the horror club. When you see the grin on the ghost's face, you know this was the perfect solution. Just in time, too, because after a unanimous vote, Professor Krupnik mutters some strange words and waves his arms. Whatever he did, it worked. The sun drops below the horizon, and you're still a kid. You settle down to listen to the ghost's scary stories, thrilled that this adventure has come to a happy end. end. The, the, this one is definitely good. <laughs> I, yeah, fact, but are we a millionaire? Are we a millionaire, uh, yeah. bro? Are we a millionaire with a, sick wings? Like, this is... Like, every once in a while, there's a website that's, like, called... It's called would you press, press the button dot com. I think we did it in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's just would you rather questions. This... That absolutely reads... These two options for, like, quote-unquote goodish endings reads exactly like one of those made... By a, like a child would you mm -hmm. be a bat but you have a billion dollars it, it's like it, or would you like to not be a bat but be friends with a ghost <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that is my favorite version of those where the things aren't actually related yeah at all it's would you like to be a bat and have a million dollars or would you like to be friends with a ghost and live on a hill and it's like yeah, what huh? I, I know <laughs> And that's where we had this was yeah we got um we got bodied by this one but hey i oh, at least a couple times over but i think we did I like see this ending ultra good ending yeah i think that this this honestly i don't know what other good endings are in the book and what they'd be like but i feel like mm -hmm. being friends with professor krupnik is the true good ending for sure yes like no doubt I no doubt I'm just going to uh, quickly pull our attention one second as well, that we have not faced an ancient mummy, a witch, or a hungry werewolf, just the terrifying ghost of Professor Krupnik himself. So that was correct. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, yeah. Those were our two options. We also never saw, like, Nick or Debbie or, or Connor. We know what's going on with Connor. That man smells like a capital D dumpster. I mean, again, the capital D dumpster, that'll be again for a return to page in the future. Because, I mean, they, ah. they, they're very separate chunks, you know? Like, you you will get guided down, like, one of three, like, major paths that all have their mm -hmm. own, like, branching ends. And so, yeah, we, like, just straight up don't even get to know those other characters. That's It's interesting. And there was a really big chunk of this where we were literally just ping-ponging from house to crypt house to front yard to house to front yard to freaking house to front yard <laughs> so hey but alas i just like the idea that like every morning we woke up and went all right outside again oh no come back in yeah forgot yep, about yep. that oh yep oops oh darn that's right bat I knew that i don't know how i keep forgetting i'm still a bat it's just squeaks the whole time <laughs> yeah this was a this was a wild one this was a wild one more this was good fun it was very good fun i mean it's always good fun i feel like that's just the default is that it's good fun but yeah this very, one was very, very true this one had the kind of like strange uh story structure that i more would have expected out of like a carnival or um a time travel 
but this was just like yes. this was just the club one <laughs> like we're just in a club but i, I like it. yeah I like Nice. This is this is almost like the platonic ideal of what I assume is a goosebump story. So the fact that we went through like the carnival yeah. first and then we went through time travel afterwards, this more than anything is very memorable as kind of like obviously like yeah. a Stephen King kind of like small group of six-ish children inspired kind of situation. Like it, it very well places itself in horror canon. Yeah. And then also you have the uh Beetleberry Crunch ending. Which, you know, mm -hmm. hey, why not? But alas, it's already been an hour and a half. So, hey, I think we'll say, like, this is a podcast. It, go yes. listen, you know, listen to it on podcast platforms. It should be on anything that really matters. Uh, and if not, send an email to turn to pagecast at gmail.com. Let me know if there's a platform you would rather have it on uh, or you would like to have it on that I haven't put it on yet. And I'll see what I can do. And consider rating it over on those so it like shows up in search results, everything like that. And a thank you to the people that did, because we do rank on on Spotify now as a result of that. So huge thank you to those people. Much appreciated, and thank you to those of you who are considering doing it as well. Yeah, it's very kind, very very kind, very very nice, uh, very messy, very scary, very much. <laughs> I forgot that was that was was that what the the last ending was on the other book? I think so. Either way. I don't recall, unfortunately. Yeah, that mem that memory was framalized. That mm -hmm. one I re that one I, I remember. <laughs> that one I will never as forget. As soon as we finished recording that, I immediately went and told Pete the whole story about framalization. Then I was like, I think I got this wrong. I played part of the episode for it. Yeah, it's oh, it's good. Uh, but alas, yeah, this is this has been the podcast. I uh, thank everybody for joining us, and thank you, Rhapsody, for the the voices. And the spooks we shared along the way. But next time, what is the next book? Uh, give yourself goosebumps for is, oh boy. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> the Deadly Experiments of Dr. Eek. <laughs> there's, a, there's a monkey on the cover. I'm excited. I'm excited about that. All well, right. Yes. Well, that'll be next week. But for now, bye bye. Adios.